quiet. It's already dark. You've already been comfortable in the presence of God, I believe, in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And, and when your alarm goes off, when you're done, you just go right into prayer. So, so it's even a, a thicker prayer, a more intense prayer. It doesn't even have to be the longest prayer because most of your prayer anyway should be listening, not speaking. So when you've been listening for 20 or 30, 40 minutes every morning, when it comes time for your prayer right after, you're going to get right to the point. You're going to pray for everybody that you know that you can think of, especially your loved ones and the people in your life and yourself as well. Uh, real, succinct, serious prayers. Because understand that the Spirit has been working within you. You're, you're a different kind of person when you come out of that meditation of listening to God. And your prayers are more clear. Your prayers are more powerful. They're more succinct. They're more pointed. They're more directed at the real needs and real issues that people have, which really aren't many. We really don't have that many needs if we focus on the root. So what I'm suggesting today, as we are being almost even discipled by the Holy Spirit, even in the moving, for we know not what things we should pray for, we need to recognize that as we've been in communion with God, even as we recognize Gideon, when he left the communion with that emissary of God, he had a new purpose, he had a new plan, he had a clarity, he knew what to do, he knew what to pray for, he knew how to respond. We look at Isaiah when he was caught up in Isaiah 6, you know, and speaking to God, oh God, you know, I'm a man of unclean lips. Then the angel of the Lord placed that burning coal on his lips and said, now your lips have been purged, your lips are no longer unclean. We'll recognize that we begin to see things that are clear and succinct and we know how to respond. In the scriptures, Paul, when he had his vision, Peter, when he had his vision, Cornelius, when he had his vision, John the Revelator, when he had his visions, right? And Jesus. There's a clarity in listening and prayer and the visions and the communication that the Spirit gives you. And so now when you are in a position to begin interceding for someone else, there is a clarity. You have learned a clarity of intercession. You know a lot of times when the people that you see, your family members, your children, whatever, the real issues. They think they know what their real issues are, but you walking with the Holy Spirit within you, having even been mentored by relationship with the Holy Spirit, listening, you've been discipled by the Holy Spirit, you know how to respond to the ills that other folks have. You're beginning to get a keener insight into their real issues. They don't know what they should pray for, but a lot of times you see, and you know that. Even when you try to tell them what their real problem is, they don't want to hear it. Well, it's not, you didn't want to hear it either. Don't worry about it. Make intercession for them, just as the Holy Spirit has been making intercession for you. And they'll end up hearing, because you know that they have the same issue that you have had. <laughs> you know, you don't listen. You don't hear. But now you are listening. Now you are hearing. Pray for them, because they're just like you. They don't want to hear you. You didn't want to hear either. Pray for them, that they will hear. And then believe that your prayer will be answered, your intercession for them, because you're praying for them in an area that they don't know that they have an ill, just as the Holy Spirit was interceding for you in a way that they didn't, that you didn't know you had an ill. You see what I'm saying? I think you do. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I've run out of time. But I want to thank you once again for joining me for a, another perspective. And I want, to, I want to tell you, close with this one tip, but you know that God truly, truly loves you. Right? You know that. And, and how does, how do you respond to folks that you love? Don't you want to talk to them? I mean, you like to listen to them and listen to their particular opinion, but when you really, really love somebody and you have insight that you know that they really need because they're struggling and bumping their heads and scratching their knees and, and they're just discouraged and down and depressed and things just aren't working right, and you have the answer and they're your loved one, you want them to listen to you because you love them. Well, guess what? God loves you. And he wants to talk to you. But you need to make some quiet time. Make some meditation time. Quit spending all your time praying and asking for stuff. Just be quiet. And recognize that you don't know what things you need to pray for. But God does. He knows you better than you know yourself. Just listen to that still small voice. In the name of Jesus. Well, again, without further ado, I do want to thank you once again for joining me for another perspective. And let me reiterate tidbit. You know, it's that God truly, truly loves you. He really does. And so do I.